Hello, and welcome to our fifth of six information sessions on the topic of industrial hemp for Indigenous businesses. In this information session, we will be talking about industrial hemp fiber and its many uses, how to make money with hemp fiber, and some government regulations. These information sessions are brought to you by the Indigenous Chamber of Commerce of Ontario in partnership with the Tequa Tagamu Nation of New Post Reserve. My name is Keith Wilson, and I would like to talk today about industrial hemp fiber. In session one, we learned about the history of hemp and its huge impact on our civilization. In session two, we learned about the agriculture of growing hemp. In session three, we learned about the seed harvest and all the products derived. In session four, we learned about the process required to transform these seeds into the desired products. Now, we'll talk about the other main component of the harvest, the fiber. In the next and final session, we'll talk about processing the fiber into products. As mentioned in an earlier workshop, hemp grown specifically to harvest the fiber requires unique conditions and expertise. Let's talk more about what makes hemp fiber so special? First, a seed is chosen that is suitable for the local soil and climatic conditions. Then the seeds must be planted to promote fiber growth over grain yield. That is, the plants are seeded much closer together so that they compete for sunlight and grow much taller. This produces plant stems with abundantly long and strong fibers. In addition, the plants are harvested earlier, before flowering, to ensure a lower lignin content in the fiber. Lignin is a strong cellulosic binder which strengthens the integrity of the plant. Once the plant matures to a certain point, the lignin becomes much stronger and it is much more difficult to release the bonds between the fibers. This lignin requires extreme temperatures and pressures to break their hold on the fiber cell structure. That is necessary to make paper, for instance. But paper isn't the only thing you can make from hemp fiber. Hemp fiber can also be used as bandages, diapers, and feminine hygiene products because of its antimicrobial properties. The fabric that is obtained from hemp is beneficial for individuals with sensitive skin or allergies to synthetic fabrics. Building materials from hemp have a high insulation value and are resistant to mold and mildew. The entire plant can even be pelletized and used as in wood-burning pellet stoves. In earlier workshops, we saw that the stock is composed of long outer fibers and inner shorter fibers both of which have had many uses over the years. The hemp plant has the bark, epidermis, outer layer, the bast fiber, long fibers, and the herd, short, woody fibers. The fiber can be used to replace fiberglass, which is commonly used as an insulation material. In Europe, automotive parts are being made from hemp fiber, which is lighter and stronger than steel, or fiberglass. We already talked about making hemp paper, but there are other products you can make with the hemp fiber. With the shorter, woodier fibers of the industrial hemp plant called the herd or shives, many unusual products can be made. Believe it or not, you can actually use the hemp herd to produce plastic, which means that anything made out of plastic can also be made from hemp. Another unusual product using hemp herds is hempcrete. Hempcrete is essentially concrete made using hemp fibers as the aggregate. The last products we will discuss for the shorter hemp fibers are hemp pellets. So let's jump right in and talk about hemp plastic first. The fiber is cellulosic and therefore can be used as a raw material to make plastic. 
Natural gas is the feedstock for plastic manufacturing, so any replacement of this fossil fuel is beneficial to the environment. This would be a great alternative to regular plastic because it is clean, better for the environment, and renewable, unlike fossil fuels. Plastic causes a great deal of air, sea, and land pollution, and it is a serious threat to anything living on this planet. Since it is not made from fossil fuels, hemp-based plastic can be made to be fully biodegradable. Not only would hemp-based plastic benefit the environment, but it is also non-toxic. For example, a hemp plastic water ball can't release poisonous chemicals into your water the way that a polypropylene water bottle can. Concrete is made of a mixture of aggregate and Portland cement. Specific types of sand and gravel make up the aggregate and Portland cement is a powdered lime mixture. Hempcrete uses the hemp fiber to completely replace the aggregate. This eases the current worldwide aggregate shortage and the end product has lower freight and handling costs. The hempcrete mixture can use both long and short fibers. The processes for producing hempcrete will be covered in more detail in session six, industrial hemp fiber processing. So be sure to check that out. Hempcrete has a range of desirable thermal, structural, and moisture handling properties that make it a fantastic building material. Other properties that make it great for construction include being antimicrobial, which makes it mold and mildew resistant. It also has a high fire rating and good acoustical properties. These fibers have found wide usage in building construction as structural block walls, composite panels, and insulation, again, replacing fossil fuels. The blocks and panels are lighter, but still strong as normal concrete, but with a higher insulation value. These lighter weight blocks lower labor costs and speed up construction. Using hempcrete as a building material makes ecological and financial sense because it is annually renewable, low impact, and can be sourced from the waste streams that come from processing other hemp products. Fuel pellets can be made from the waste generated in the processing of the other hemp products. The entire plant can actually be used to make these fuel pellets. You can make these fuel pellets using only the woody core of the hemp plant. However, the process is the same. Using only the woody core of the plant would allow you to use the bast fibers for other products like clothing. We will go through this pelletizing process in session six, industrial hemp fiber processing. Hemp pellets burn hotter than wood chip pellets and produce much less ash than grass, hay, or straw pellets. Hemp pellets only produce around 2% ash. This allows hemp pellets to be used in a much larger range of pellet stoves and boilers than are currently on the market, with a lot less maintenance. Fuel pellets are a common natural product in the North and can take advantage of existing supply chains and sales outlets. In addition to having combustion qualities superior to wood pellets, they are made from an annual renewable resource. This is important to note because forests take much longer to replenish than fields of industrial hemp. Essentially, you can do a lot with the shorter fibers of the hemp plant but many more products have been made from the long fibers, the bast fiber. Bast fibers have been reclaimed from the hemp plants for centuries throughout the world, and they are well known for their long, strong fiber bundles that make up the outer portion of the stock. For example, these long fibers are used to produce rope, twine, and textiles. 
Hemp fibers can be used to make high quality paper products without the need for toxic chemicals. The result is a high quality paper that is chlorine free and doesn't yellow. This hemp paper is highly valued by artists and is sold as a specialty paper along with linen paper and parchment. Hemp paper used in volumes three to 400 years old, still strong, but 97% of the books printed between 1900 and 1937 on tree paper will be usable for less than 50 years. Hemp paper can be recycled seven to eight times, compared with only three times for wood pulp paper. We will talk about the processes used to make hemp paper in session six. Long fibers, which are stripped from the outer part of the plant stem, were also traditionally used in the making of rope and sails. European explorers built ships and because of the mold and mildew resistant properties of hemp, used hemp ropes and sails to help them explore the globe. When exploring the tropical climates, they found plants with hemp-like properties, such as manila, jute, and sisal. These plants eventually started to replace hemp in the marketplace because they grew much faster and a cheaper tropical workforce was readily available. Since Canada does not have a tropical climate, we grow industrial hemp that is better suited to our Northern geography. The natural cellulose fibers from hemp are used to make several different products out of cloth. This includes simulated leather products, hemp wool, and as we've seen, hemp denim. The cloth made from industrial hemp fiber is stronger, warmer, and more absorbent than cotton, and it can hold its own against the weather. A traditional product would be teepees and summer tents. With the newer and advancing technology that is available, we can now produce dresses, hats, bags, shoes, ropes, canvas, and more. All of this is possible because the hemp fibers can be mixed and blended with other types of fibers to produce different qualities of cloth. Just to be clear, we are not producing fiberglass, but producing a fiberglass replacement. Complete car bodies have been made from hemp fiber by Henry Ford in a demonstration almost 100 years ago. The panels were composed of 70% cellulose fibers that were shown to have an impact strength 10 times stronger than steel. The car was rust proof and accepted paint well. Henry Ford predicted that his car would be safer, lighter, and less expensive. The prohibition of hemp agriculture brought an end to Henry's efforts. However, European auto manufacturers have continued to use hemp in making parts and have even made a few prototype vehicles. But the usage goes even further with recreational products such as boats, canoes, kayaks, paddle boards, and RVs for the summer months. Winter recreational products such as snow machines and downhill equipment are also viable uses. The most cost-efficient way to quickly generate a revenue stream is to pelletize the entire plant until you have installed the proper equipment and personnel necessary to process the seeds and fiber. Pelletizing will be necessary to handle any waste generated by the processing of fiber when making products. One of the differences between making money with seeds and making money with the fiber is the mode of sales. With seeds and the various products made from them, most of the sales can be made online. With the fibers, it is a more traditional sales route where the fiber will be sold to various processing facilities. Generally, the same rules apply in terms of THC contact 
content. But since it is not a food product, Health Canada doesn't get involved the same way that they do with seed crops. An industrial hemp license is required to undertake most activities associated with the growing, selling, import, export, cleaning, and processing of hemp seed, grain, and fiber. However, once hemp fiber is removed from the field, no license is required. Plants and plant parts may not contain more than 0.3% THC when sampled and tested. Products made or derived from hemp must not contain more than 10 micrograms of THC per gram. Thank you so much for joining me today for our talk about industrial hemp fiber for our fifth of six information sessions. Hopefully, you've learned a little bit more about hemp fiber and its many uses, how to make money with hemp fiber, and some relevant government regulations. These information sessions are brought to you by the team at ICCO in partnership with the Te Kwa Tagamu Nation. My name is Keith Wilson. Thanks again for joining. Stay tuned for the sixth session, which will be about industrial hemp fiber processing.